possible contender for my favourite budget Irish whisky. Let's jump in and have a look. What's happening guys? Welcome to the Whiskey Shed. My name is John McGrath and this is my shed where I drink whiskey. I'm essentially an Irish man in his workshop tasting whiskey and sharing that experience with you guys. So today we have a bottle of single green double barrel from Glen and the Lock. It's Irish whiskey and I have to say I picked this up for 30 euros and I think this could be contender for this year's best budget Irish uh, whiskey in my opinion or at least my favorite Irish whiskey that I've tasted for this price this year so before we get in and nose and taste it let me give you a little bit of story about Glendalock distillery uh, a little bit of history a few stories and then we'll taste the whiskey okay so a little bit about Glendalock distillery it was set up in 2011 by five friends from Dublin and uh, that's great for two reasons it's a new whiskey uh, a new distillery set up in Ireland and it's only 2011 which means I don't have to go back and learn 200 years of history which is fantastic only a little bit of history with this particular bottle so like I say 2011 set up in Glendalock in County Wicklow now Glendalock is an absolutely beautiful place the name Glendalock means Glen of the Two Lakes in English so Glendalock is essentially the Gaelic for Glen of the Two Lakes and it's like I say it's an absolutely beautiful spot Wicklow is considered the Garden of Ireland. That's the kind of name of Wicklow County. Up around the Wicklow Mountains and the Glen of the Downs and Glen of Lock is an absolutely beautiful part of the country. So, five friends set up that uh, distillery back in 2011, like I say. You now, most of our distillate was coming from the Cooley Distillery, I believe. And in 2019, last year, I think the single uh, pot still whiskey was their first distillate that they bottled themselves. I'm not sure, I couldn't find out whether they bottled this one themselves. This is essentially a three year old or four-year-old green whiskey so it's their, their distillery is going long enough for this to be their own whiskey but like I say I couldn't definitively find out whether this came from the Glendalock distillery or whether this is still distilled from the Cooley distillery now on the front of the bottle we have this madman here this guy is Saint Kevin so Saint Kevin when he was made a bishop he went to Glendalock in the sixth century he essentially became a hermit, a bit of a mad lad. He put on the robe and sandals and headed off up to the mountains and decided he was just going to live up in the mountains. Um, I know how he feels. Sometimes I get the urge to buy the robe and sandals as well and just walk off up to the mountains and leave it all behind. But he did that. He lived up there on his own. There's actually a cave up on the lake there. It's called uh, St. Kevin's Bed. Now, it's debated whether that was actually his or not he definitely probably stayed in it all right but it was probably a bronze age cave it was definitely cut out it's a man-made cave so they reckon it was cut out in the bronze age which predates saint kevin but you can see him on the front of the bottle here he's holding a bird in one hand and eggs in the other hand so the story goes that he used to meditate he would walk way steep out into the lake and he would stand out in the lake like this and stay there for hours on end praying and meditating and he was out there so long that a bird came and landed in his hand then laid eggs in his hand so he saw that as a sign as a test that he had to stay there so he stayed there with his hands like this up in the air until those eggs hatched so the story goes now if you believe that i have some magic beans that i could sell you but that's that's what the bottle that's what's on the bottle we have saint kevin it's glendalock distillery started in 2011. now mark anthony bought out the distillery last year i think he acquired the remaining 60 percent of that distillery so mark anthony is a canadian um spiritually he owns a lot of canadian spirits and stuff like that he's an international kind of a spirit a guy so he bought out them in 2019 so he's the sole owner i think or the majority owner of this company now and this is their single grain double barrel irish whiskey so not too much history on this we just have saint kevin which is a bit of a mad lad so let's jump in and taste and nose this whiskey right so let's get some of this in the glass and taste it so the minute I open this bottle, oh, it's just a lovely, lovely smell. This is uh, aged first in bourbon barrels and then it's finished for six months in Oloroso Sherry. Now, I love to see Oloroso Sherry. If you're fans of this channel, you will know that uh, I'm a big fan of whiskey that's finished or aged in Oloroso Sherry, such as Redbreast 12 and a bottle that was recommended to me. It's a one that I reviewed two whiskeys ago, which was Slain Whiskey, which was 30 years again. And that was, up until that, that point, I think that was my favorite budget Irish that I've tasted to date. But since I tasted this, I think this one is pretty, pretty nice. So like I say, a single grain whiskey, I think it's, they call it single grain, 
But uh, yeah, I think it's 90% corn and it is 10% malted barley, I think. Now, don't quote me on that. It's hard to find out exactly what's in this. It's bottled at 42% ABV and that's about all the details you get with it. But on the nose. So on the nose, it's lovely. This has everything I love in a whiskey. It's really, really nice. And like I said, this was 30 euros, so. You get the vanilla, you get the honey, you get the caramel toffee, all that kind of bourbon stuff. Then you get the spices, you get the dried fruits like the sultanas and the raisins, the Christmas cake vibe, the fruit cake that I really, really like. You get those spices are in there. It's lovely and there's a nuttiness to it as well. And there's a nice hint of like marzipan, so almond ice, and you get almonds from it, which is absolutely lovely. I find some early grain whiskies can kind of have an acetone kind of smell. And I don't know if you ever smell like nail polish remover. It has a kind of a floral sweetness to it, but then a very overpowering kind of ethanol, alcoholy kind of to it. And then when that softens out in a whiskey, it be kind of becomes that kind of almond marzipan kind of scent. That's what's in this. It's lovely. So yeah, you get up front, you get that sherryness from the Oloroso cask jumps out at you straight away. The minute you open the bottle, you can actually smell that. It's kind of like slain in that respect on red breast. So you get the deep fruits, the dried fruits, the toffees, the vanillas, the marzipan, the nuttiness. It's all in this glass and it's absolutely lovely. So on the palate. So on the palate. Up front, it kind of starts off soft, then it kind of explodes into a sweetness. There's a kind of a, there's a the definite taste that I'm trying to put my finger on, which I can't quite, right in the middle of the whole lot. But like I say, it starts off slow and then it explodes into a lovely sweetness with honey. Then you get that marzipan and a kind of a nuttiness. And then it lingers with a beautiful sweetness. But there's another flavour in there. It's kind of like honey. It's kind of floral. It's somewhere in between. I suppose it's a mix of the marzipan, that honey, the floral notes. It's absolutely lovely. It kind of lingers then with some sweetness. And then it finishes with a little pepperiness and a kind of a burn. It does have that kind of green burn right at the very, very end. You can feel the heat in your throat. Now, it's not as bad as some whiskies that I've tasted. Some young green whiskies, they can be really fiery and hot and peppery and not very nice. It's almost that feeling of heartburn you get after you taste it. It's not too bad with this being a young green whiskey and only 30 euros. There's definitely a lot going on with it. So... Yeah, so like I say, it's lovely on the nose. There's toffee, there's honey, there's vanilla that you get from the bourbon, the dried fruit, the salt hannas, the raisins, marzipan, almonds, it's all in there. For a 30 euro bottle of whiskey, I think this is absolutely fantastic. So once more on the palate. Yeah. Like I say, it starts off slow. As soon as it hits the mid palate, you get that kind of explosion of sweetness and marzipan and almonds, uh, which is quite nice. And there's another little sweet flavor in there that's, like I said, it's somewhere between the floral and honey. Can't quite put my finger on how I would describe it, but it's lovely. Finishes then with honey sweetness and some vanilla and toffee. And then slight peppery note with a little bit of ethanol born or green burn, that young green whiskey. Not too bad though, Not doesn't make it unpleasant. There is just a little bit of heat on the finish. And you can keep tasting the sweetness. The sweetness kind of lingers with a kind of a nice sugary syrupy honeyness to it. Very, very good for a young kind of green whiskey. But I have to say for 30 euros, I think this is absolutely fantastic. Now I was gonna set it on its side for about 10 minutes like I always do. Let it open up and see if it changes and see what else we can pull out of this whiskey. So very, very impressed with this one so far. I think this could be my contender for a budget Irish of the year of what I've tasted so far this year at least. I would like to compare this to the Slane whiskey that I tasted two whiskeys ago. Unfortunately, my Slane is all gone. Some friends helped me to finish that bottle off. They really liked it as well and it's fantastic in an Irish coffee. But I think this could beat it. So definitely want to do a head to head with this one and Slane whiskey for two 30 euro uh, budget grain whiskies that are finished in Oloroso sherry casks. That's two of these, the Glendalock uh, double barrel and the Slane whiskey. But for me, I, from what I can remember and what I said about Slane, the flavors in this are that little bit stronger, a little bit more pronounced and a little bit nicer. So let's leave it for about 10 minutes in the glass now and see what it turns out like.
Okay, now that we let it sit in the glass for 10 minutes, we'll see if it opened up or changed any. And uh, like I say, give it every opportunity to impress. So let's see what we get now. So on the nose. So definitely, there's definitely the honey now and floral notes are to the forefront I'm getting. A little bit more of the nuttiness and more of the marzipan. It has that lovely, like I say, sweet, almondy kind of note to it. A little bit of nuttiness now is definitely more to the forefront. It's actually an absolutely lovely whiskey um, on the nose. Now, if you're used to drinking whiskies and you've tasted loads and loads of whiskies, you're not going to be blown away by this. But for 30 euros, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And if you're like me, you like a kind of a nice budget whiskey to go and sip on, then this, I have to say, I highly recommend it. That nose is absolutely lovely. So having let it opened up, definitely sweetness of the honey and you can get more of the nutty character and a little bit more of that almond on the nose. But all the deep fruits are still in there, that spiciness, that fruit cake, that kind of Christmas cake kind of vibe is there. So on the palate. So again, starts off slow like I said. I have a little bit more oakiness in it now, a little bit more woody tones. Again, the mid palate is all that marzipan kind of sweet honey floral notes, a little bit more of the spices. It lingers with a lovely sweetness and a little bit of pepperiness to it. It's kind of intermingled with the peppery note. There's no real, what I call, alcohol born from this. A little bit of heat on the throat you do get. Again, it is a young grain whiskey, but nothing like the last few grain whiskies that I've tried where I've felt like I've had heartburn after them. That doesn't do that from this. It has a lovely kind of oily texture to the, to the whiskey as well. It's definitely a quintessential kind of Irish vibe going on with it. You would know straight away when you nose and taste this that it's an Irish whiskey. But yeah, very, very nice. For 30 euros, I can't recommend this enough. Now, they do do a bunch of other expressions. They have a 13 year old single grain that's aged in Japanese oak, which is absolutely, supposed to be absolutely fantastic. I would love to get my hands on a bottle of that. They have a single pot still release, which I believe, like I said already in the video, was released in 2019, and that is the first distillate that they bottled it themselves. So I'm eager to try that because that's aged in Irish oak. Now Irish oak, is different to American oak. I have American oak here in the workshop and I have Irish oak down there. And when you cut into it, you can smell the difference. You can smell the difference in loads of different woods. The woods are so varied in their scent and flavor that comes from them. Irish oak, I always find, has a slightly little bit more sour, more beer-like quality when you cut into it. There's a little bit more sweetness to the American oak. So I'm fascinated to see what Irish oak does to a single pot still whiskey, which is my favorite style of whiskey. So yeah. This one for me comes highly recommended. 30 euros a bottle, I think it's very, very nice. Lovely. So there we go guys, that has been my opinion on Glendalock Double Barrel Single Grain Irish Whiskey. To sum it up, I have to say for 30 euros, it's usually in around 30 euros to 35 euros. You will get this in the States for around 30 to 35 dollars as well. It is readily available over there, so I believe. So yeah, definitely recommend this one. If you're in the market for a budget Irish whiskey and you don't want to get Jameson or something like that, this is fantastic to me. And um, for that 30 euro mark, I was delighted when I got that nose from it. And the flavors are absolutely lovely. For a budget whiskey, I think it's absolutely fantastic. And if you set your expectations to the fact that this is only 30 euros, it's a single grain whiskey, not a single malt whiskey, and like I say, set your expectations accordingly. For 30 euros, I think you will get an absolute kick out of this. It's absolutely fantastic and I really, really like it. And I'm gonna try some more Glendalock with whiskies to see what they like. They also do Pucheen, so uh, a Pucheen is Irish moonshine. So Pucheen, the word Pucheen means small pot. So it's pot in pronounced Pucheen. Uh, so yeah, they do also do Pucheen and they do gins as well, which I might try a few of those too. Interesting to see what their Pucheen is like. Um, and I definitely want to check out their single pot still. So there we go guys, Glendalock, highly recommended from me. I think this could be in the running for my uh, favorite budget Irish whiskey this year. We'll do a little end of year roundup on my favorite budget Irish whiskeys and uh, we'll see which one I like. We might even do a blind tasting. That might be a bit of a crack and a bit of a laugh and see if I can actually pick this out of a blind tasting and see if I'm just not full of nonsense. But yeah, definitely recommend it to me. So let's finish on a toast like we always do. Get a little bit of this in the glass. 
and it was cold in the shed tonight so this one is going to be apt another Irish toast so may you always have warm words on a cold night a full moon on a dark night and a smooth road all the way to your door Sláinte Makara I shall see you in the next one guys take it easy It's lovely, it has everything I love in a whiskey. Honey, toffee, caramel, sherry influence, dark fruits, marzipan, almonds, nuttiness, for a 30 euro whiskey, that's pretty good.